So we're now thinking about how we're going to get the information from uh, the bank into our system. So we talked about the different options last time, remembering the components necessary. You need an account that it's going to be tied to, typically a cash account, although it could be a credit card account, which we'll talk about later. So if we look at the general ledger accounts down here, we've got our accounts. Our accounts have to be a cash type of account. If you were in the business view, by the way, the chart of accounts are located in the bookkeeping area and then uh, the chart of accounts. If you already set up an account, then you can connect directly. You can connect to the bank by going connect to the bank here, uh, or we can go to the banking tab up top. And within the banking tab, we've got the first tab up top, which is banking. If you're in the business view, by the way, there, it's under bookkeeping and then transactions up top. And then you have the banking tab. And then here, you've got a couple different options connecting to the bank or upload transactions. Now, most people would connect directly to the bank, but there are some reasons where you might want to upload transactions, such as, for example, if you have a whole lot of transactions that uh, you need to upload, you might be able to go further back in history by downloading the transactions from the bank. And it's also might be a good tool to use in a practice problem scenario if you don't want to connect your banks here, but you still want to be practicing with the bank feeds. You also could come up with your own bank feed data files, for example, just to practice importing different kind of scenarios into the system uh, here. So if I hit the upload transactions button, we have a couple different options. We've got the manually up your load your transactions. Number one, open a new tab and sign into your online bank account. Number two, export your bank statement in a .csv file. That's basically, so these are the different formats that you can use to upload. And there's quite a few of them, more than many other kinds of uh, accounting software, which is quite nice. The CSV is kind of like the default that you can use if you don't have what would be the most common text type or the most common type, which would be the QBO. Now we're uploading into QuickBooks Online. So most banks uh, these days have a QBO type of file that you can download from the institution. It looks something like this. It looks like the actual kind of desktop software image, but this is actually a data file. So we'll show you how to uh, download that. And that would be, you would think the easiest thing to download and then upload. However, you can download a CSV. Now, if your bank doesn't have the option of a QBO or possibly if you want to manipulate the data before you upload it into your system for whatever reason, possibly you want to add like vendors or something like that into it, you could download it as a CSV, which oftentimes we open in Excel, even though it's like a comma delineated uh, structure, and you can actually use Excel to uh, adjust that, or you can make your own data file using Excel and then save it as a CSV and practice different scenarios with simply uh, that method as well, which is nice. You got the QFX file, a .OFX file, and a .text file. So a lot of options for the uploading. Once we upload it into the system, we'll be in the same spot uh, as if we connected to the bank in that we'll have our information in what I would call, this is the sample company, the bank feed limbo down here, where we'll have to populate the added information to pull it on over uh, into actually constructing our financial statements or verifying the data that we have, data input we have done. Now, if you go into your bank, most uh, banks have uh, online banking these days. And if you go into the account information that you can usually find something that's gonna say something like download account activity. And then you can download the account activity and you wanna set the date range. Now the date range is quite important because you wanna say how far back do you want to go? Are you starting a new company from scratch and you're just gonna start from whatever the date of the, of the bank that was started out? Or was there prior data in the system that you were accounting for in some other method and you want to make sure that you're not doubling up on the transactions that you're going to be adding to the system and you want to make sure that you're not missing any of the transactions you're entering into the system so we're going to pick a i'm just going to pick a date range for a few months of downloaded transactions so that we can have information to practice putting into the system if you're pro if you're following along i suggest doing a similar process with the practice file here so you can practice the bank feeds or even create your own data file. We'll take a look at what it looks like in terms of a comma sliced uh, data file that we can open in Excel so that you can just practice the different techniques that we'll be working with. So although our data will be a little bit different, 
you can you could practice the same kind of concepts as we do the data input so then down here below we've got the quickbooks file and remember that if you're if you're starting your own company file you might want to have a you might want to see if you can use a 30-day free trial and then start another company file possibly for your actual bookkeeping file that you're going to use to enter the your financial data outside of a practice kind of of setup so that's that's the idea that we're going through here but if you're doing your own company file you can use these same concepts as we go through the practice problem now this would be the the quickbooks so this particular institution has it downloadable in uh quickbooks which is the one we would want for sure quick in is not owned by intuit anymore so you don't want that one if you're trying to upload to quickbooks so just note just be aware of that it looks similar it's not the same and then the comma delineated that's going to be the one that you can kind of open in excel it's not exactly an excel sheet but i'll show you that format in a second so if we close that out if i was to do that and download the information it would look something like this now this looks like a quickbooks desktop kind of icon here but if i right click and look at the properties of it and we're going to see the properties of it it's going to be a quickbooks ofx uh, data file 